Okay, guys, so I got um, some bad news for you. Um, so there's two bills right now that are uh, likely being fast-tracked uh, through the legislature. About as bad and catastrophic of bills as you can imagine. Uh, they are HB uh, 6323, SB uh, 1117. Uh, what this would do if they're passed is put uh, the state of Michigan into an interstate compact that uh, would essentially eliminate the Electoral College or reduce it to basically something that's nominal, something that's really just you know a rubber stamp for the uh, for the popular vote. So this this uh, is called the National Popular Vote Compact, um, HB uh, 6323 and SB uh, 117. So the, these le this legislation, uh, you would think that this is the type of legislation that, in particular, after what happened in 2016 where Donald Trump lost the popular vote, the official tally at least, by three million. Obviously there were irregularities. We saw some of the irregularities in Detroit where 37 percent of the, uh, the, the polling locations had uh, more uh, votes than people were actually registered. So fraud is rampant, fraud is widespread, and none of the, there's no safeguards in place in a lot of these different areas. The um, you know the you know there's always the stereotypical Chicago the dead people vote that happens obviously but a lot of these areas the um, the, the, the the ballot boxes are just stuffed uh, we saw Obama uh, it, indirectly encouraging illegal immigrants to go to the voting booth before the 2016 election so you see this type of stuff and and you see how the Democrats are gaming uh, the system as it is and really the founding fathers putting in the electoral college was something that's still safeguarding our rights, still preventing the uh, republic from completely falling in this day and age. So we should be thankful for that. And, and you would think that a Republican-dominated legislature in a state that just went red spectacularly and unexpectedly, uh, you think that would be a state where they would be the last state that would enact the uh, national uh, popular vote. But unfortunately, this is gaining a lot of steam. Uh, I was just going through the, uh, the, the different uh, co-sponsors for these uh, measures. And, uh, uh, you know, ridiculously, uh, it's way more Republicans signed on as sponsors and co-sponsors than even Democrats. So I'll read, I'll read you the names of the people who are sponsoring or co-sponsoring this legislation. Uh, Representative Tim Kelly, uh, Steve Marino, Ed Canfield, uh, Julie Alexander, Jim Lilly, Jason Wentworth, Jason Shepard, Tristan Cole, David Maturin, Eric Luthauser, uh, Rob Verhulen, uh, Joseph Bellino, Derry uh, Rendon, uh, Aaron Miller. And uh, in the Senate, it's, um, it's a lot of uh, people you've probably heard of. Uh, Dave Hildenbrand, Mike Green, Kenneth Horn, uh, Darren Boer, uh, Jeff Hansen, Rick Jones, Mike Shirky, Philip Pavlov, uh, Mike Kowal, Jack Brandenburg, yep, Kowal, uh, Jeff, Jack Brandenburg, James Merlot, um, Wayne Schmidt, and there might be a couple others on here as well. Uh, so that's a lot of people who have signed on to this. So my initial thought was that you know, this is probably deliberate sabotage like we're seeing from a lot of congressional Republicans who are doing what they can to sabotage Trump and his agenda at the national level. I figured this was a uh, similar betrayal only at uh, a state level instead of a national level. But I did read today in West Michigan politics that apparently the, the, the lobbyists for the national uh, popular vote compact, they actually took a lot of these legislators on a... 24. Uh, 24 legislators uh, on an all-expense paid trip allegedly to Hawaii. So they were partying it up in Hawaii on the dime of the lobbyists, and then whatever they did there, you know, whatever the lobbyists had in line uh, for these guys, it obviously worked because it's an amazing uh, sponsor list of people who are behind this legislation. And uh, based on all the different sponsors of the bill in the Senate, I'd be shocked if it didn't pass the Senate. It probably will be still hard for us to for this to pass in the House, at least I would hope. But um, it's, it's definitely, there's a lot of momentum behind it, and there is a massive lobbyist push, and Michigan is the, is the place where it's happening. And right, as of right now, all the states that have signed on are all far-left blue states. 
So, you know, California, New York, Illinois, those are the states that have signed on. Those are the states that have pushed this. They're trying to make Michigan the first, even the first purple, you know, that's, I guess, our, our designation, the first purple state to uh, sign on for this scheme. So it's, uh, it's really terrifying. We're going to be having a lot of action alerts and action updates. I'm going to be writing posts on this for several different uh, grassroots outlets. Uh, to get the word out about this, email blasts the work so that we can really shame these people. Right now, uh, it's going to be fast-tracked probably in the next few weeks, but we got to get the word out as much as possible that you know, these people are selling out the party. And it might, it's probably not uh, you know, malevolence trying to sabotage the party. It's just you know, they are, you know, these people will sell you down the river for whatever their lobbyists tell them. That's the, that's the way that most of the party uh, works, unfortunately. And uh, what we have to do is we have to be vigilant and we have to get the word out about this corruption because we can still stop it. Uh, we just have to get the word out and get the word out quickly. Uh, any questions? Yes. I've heard of it, yes. The yes. app called Next Door, she says. What was very deceiving is we had a campaign manager who encouraged pro life, pro Second Amendment. I'll put our team on it tomorrow. She talks about how we can put this on the app and next door. And the Speaker of the House. And the Speaker of the House became the main proponent in Arizona. But there's a website where you can look at and you can watch a little video. Have you seen the little video that talks about this? Uh, no, I have not. We need to get that little video, maybe Google it. And it Prager University has a good one. Pr okay, I'll, I'll check that out and I'll definitely end that so in, yeah. Video that everyone said, like, okay, I'll, I'll just, uh, yeah, no one can hear, but I'll just say she said that there's a Prager U video that's very simple, very easy to understand that, um, you know, we should put in all the email blasts and stuff, so I'll definitely look into that. Yes. Where does Snyder stand on this? I, I am not I'm not uh, completely aware of Snyder's stance on it. I don't think he's made a public uh, statement on it. My inclination is he would be in support. Last year, the email when I talked about that Hawaii trip about a possibly being an illegal campaign contribution. Should we be calling our attorney general and ask him to pursue this? Uh, might as well try it. Um, I mean, it's worth a try, but I would not expect the any the governor's office or the attorney general or, or anyone to to be on our side because again, they're at the behest of the lobbyists as well. Uh, Heritage Foundation's Daily Signal, within the past week, had an article on this, and they said that this movement is within 94 electoral votes of having a majority. That, that's pro that, yeah, it's, I, I was not aware of that, but if that's the case, then that's probably why they're doing such a full court press to get this through now. They want to get this through before 2020, so that's why they're breaking out the, the Hawaii trips and all that uh, good stuff. I'll take a couple more questions. Yes. Uh, Nolan Finley had an article in his column in Sunday's paper talked about the potential for a needed law was to make it illegal to buy signatures on petitions because he felt that all this stuff that's shown up on the ballot now to change our constitution is basically being bought by, yep. Yep. by petition so. signatures. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard anybody talk about such a, such a law I've, I've never heard anyone uh, talk about the law, but I do know that it's usually out-of-state groups. Uh, even some for some of the stuff that we like, it's a lot of the times it's out-of-state groups. They make it really, really difficult for any grassroots groups to organize, to get it on the petition. So it is essentially, yes, he's right about, actually this is how they, they buy quick stuff on the ballot. I'm not, I'd have to look into the actual solution and see the pros and cons of that. But it definitely, yeah, the, 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 the special interests, uh, generally put the money up and get this stuff on the ballot. It's very rarely grassroots, anything you see on the ballot, um, you know, regarding a question. You know, in the way the Constitution was set up, it, it was to allow a grassroots movement, mm -hmm. not somebody with a big checkbook. Yeah, absolutely. Any more questions? Okay. Wouldn't Tom Leonard profit from really taking over this right now? Uh, he's running for attorney general. Well, that's a good point. Uh, all your, uh, you know, all the Tom Leonard uh, supporters in the room, uh, get on the horn with him. Let him know to uh, kill this bill and not let it for a vote in the House because he has the authority to where he could just kill it. So yeah, that's the guy you want to talk to. Let him know that you know if you're going to be out there pounding the pavement for him as attorney general and make sure that he does the right thing and uh, kills this national uh, popular vote uh, compact initiative.
Yes, thank you. And um, so, yeah, the bills, one last time, is uh, HB 6323 and SB uh, 1117. We'll be getting the word out about that. And one last thing, the person, the main person uh, pushing this in Michigan, the main lobbyist, is Sala Nuzis, who is the for disgraced former uh, committee man of the RNC, who then uh, became uh, the, the Ted Cruz uh, guy who... Uh, was uh, you know on the convention floor trying to rob Trump in the RNC. This is what he's doing now. He's doing the national popular vote. So you can never get rid of these guys. I, I didn't look because I was unaware of this, but I, I believe the electoral college is, is referred to in the Constitution. It is. So what is they, the okay? Uh, that's a good point. I'll make this point real clear. Is they're going to change it so that every state amends their own state constitution to put in language that says that the electoral college will just be a rubber stamp? for the popular vote. So every state will go in and give their elector, electoral votes to whoever wins the popular vote based on the words of this compact. And they can do it under the Constitution. So we got to stop this. Thank you.